So we have a question from the audience. I fear having an affair with a married man. We're fighting not to, but the attraction is so, so strong. It's involuntary. It's exhilarating and terrible. I cry every day about it. So far, succeeding, but but requesting more support. Yeah, it does require support. And I think you're really brave for stepping forward and asking that question. Because, you know, in our bodies, we oftentimes can't control when we have an attraction to someone. And oftentimes the, the stronger the sexual chemistry, the bigger the wound. And, and I don't mean that from a bad place. Um, I mean, l- let me say it this way. The bigger the lesson. Again, I think stepping into your truth and really feeling into like, what, what is that within me that's desiring this? So there is what's coming is something missing in your marriage that this person is potentially coming in to help you learn or see about yourself. Now, I won't say whether you should act on it or not act on it, because that's really something that you have to decide. But I would highly encourage you to get into your truth. Like, what is it about this person that I want, that I desire, that what is it that they're reflecting to me? You know, what, what are the components? Sometimes it's emotional things. Sometimes it's material things, right? Sometimes they're more successful. Sometimes they're more flashy. Sometimes they're more charismatic. And sometimes it's because we've suppressed, and this may be for the collective. May, it may not be specific to you, but we've suppressed something about ourself that we really want to express. And we have stopped ourselves for X, Y, and Z reason. And marriage oftentimes, as much as I love the concept of marriage, we sort of get into a box of like, okay, what did we both say is right and wrong in a marriage? What did my upbringing tell me is right and wrong in a marriage? And then you start like locking in to these ideas about what marriage should be and how you should act in marriage. And sometimes that means that you don't get to express yourself and you don't get to be like the the big hearted, sexy, juicy lover that you are. And someone else comes along and says, hey, I got another way for you to look at life. And you go, whew, yeah, and I want that. I want to feel this in my body. I want to be woken up, you know, like that's what they do is they wake us up from a slumber. They wake us up from something about ourselves that isn't being expressed. So first of all, have gratitude. Just absolutely have gratitude that there's something that's been awoke. Is that the word? Awoke, awakened within you that is helping you to see life in a different way. Now, acting on that creates a whole plethora of other things that I don't think I probably even need to say on here because we all know what what comes down the pike with that. I would say the best thing you can do is be honest with yourself and then be honest with your partner. Because if you dig into the nugget of like, what is it that's attracting me? You can go to your partner and you can say, hey, like I realize that I'm missing this. You might even, if you're really brave and I'm not, a lot of people aren't and it's okay, but if you're really brave, you can go to your partner and say, honey, I met someone, I have not acted on anything or I have, I flirted because I got this, whatever it is, you know, I, I, I'm like, my heart felt big and pounding out of my chest. And while I want that with you, I'm not getting that. Is there something we can do to, to, to get that? And, and I think you will find that your partner will, you know, either be like, oh my God, are you telling me that you want to cheat on me and, and like shut down or have some kind of a conniption or have a conniption and then come to this other side, which is, whoa, thank you for letting me know. Thank you for being so honest with me about what's happening. Let's talk it out. Or you can choose to just act on it and deal with however the chips fall afterwards. Oftentimes that's what happens. And I'm not saying that there's one way that's right or wrong. 
It's your soul's journey. And I say, live your soul's journey. Live, you know, how you feel in your heart. Is there more coming in from the person? Okay, I want to hear. Sorry, let tell me what what the person's saying. I just want to make sure I'm on. Yeah, so I just want to make sure that if if you have anything else to share that might shift, if you um, understood that actually the man is married and she's not, and okay. she feels like they hit on all cylinders with each other, she knows the likely outcome of affairs, he'll do anything for me and it feels good. Yes, thank you. Thank you for clarifying that just because it helps me to, to fine tune, um, you know, getting into your energy more specifically. Um, <laughs> once a snake, always a snake. If that person isn't willing to be honest the way that we were just talking about it, thinking that it was you, if that person's not willing to be honest with their current spouse, then I think it's really important that you think about what that would mean for you down the road. Because if you think that you're going to have a long-term relationship with him, and maybe that's not the case either, maybe you just want to have the affair, um, then it's, it's a repeated pattern that's going to happen again, unless that individual has worked through that issue that they have with themselves. What is it that, that is driving them to not be honest with themselves and not be honest with their partner, their spouse. And I think right there, you're dancing with integrity as, as, a, as, as a real, a really interesting thing. But I would also feel into your integrity as well. And I don't mean it from like a deep judgment standpoint. No, I mean, this happens all the time. And sometimes really beautiful things come of it. But when we have sexual relationship with other people, we get entangled with them energetically. We get entangled with them emotionally. We get entangled. And while it's fun in the beginning and it's like creates all this really juicy, you know, stuff, um, it comes back to bite us because then we want that and we want our fantasy to come true. And our fantasy, like I'm not, again, this could be for the collective. It might not be your specific fantasy. And if, if there's something more that's coming, just pause me because I want to I wanna make sure I, I hear um, this individual's comments. Um, you may have a real fantasy built around what this is going to translate to. And he is very sexy and good looking. Of course he is. Of course he is. Right? And <laughs> the image that I'm getting is, uh, is, is um, Adam and Eve in the garden and the apple. Um, so, you know, it's the temptation. And I don't mean to bring in a religious thing. I mean to bring in, you know, just th these like really deep life lessons that we get tempted with. And there is a sexiness to it because if it, if there wasn't, then you wouldn't, you, you wouldn't be attracted. And it doesn't always mean like physical good looks, right? It could be charisma. It could be whatever. But again, I think he's showing you something about yourself that you want to live, an expression of yourself that you want to express that you haven't been. There's something there. And, um, and so that charisma, you know, is going to get you, but again, I, I feel like now I might be repeating myself a little bit, but it's coming back to say that it's about integrity and entanglement. And you have to sit with those two things. You have to sit with your integrity, his integrity, and know that you will be, you already are to some degree. I don't know if you've actually, you know, partaken in it or not. You don't have to tell me if you don't want to, but it's an entanglement. and sometimes there are previous lives like karmic entanglements. And sometimes they're just like something in this life that's going to create chaos, but whatever it is that you do, uh, just know that there is another human involved in this. There's, there is a wife and there's an element of her that signed up for this contract for her husband to cheat on her. And there's all of that. However, you know, if that was your best friend, is that what you would still do? So I think we have to sit in that integrity and the entanglement and 
and really get deep with ourselves. Like, what does this mean to me? Because oftentimes what happens, it's very derailing. It's emotionally derailing. It's heart ripping in the end. It's fun when we're in it, but man, down the road, the integrity and the entanglement will come back to bite you big time. And so it's, yeah, like, why am I wanting to be in this? And I, I have a feeling what you would say to me is, it's just in my body. It's not in my mind. I'm not like thinking that I want this. Like, I wish I didn't want this. I don't want to be in this. That's the feeling that I get from you. Um, but you're loving it so much. So I would get in there and say, everything that's truth. Hey, so-and-so, whatever his name is, you are so intriguing to me for X, Y, and Z reason. But the truth is, is that you are married happily or not. If he's unhappily married, then get divorced, right? Um, think about what do you want long-term? Is this like you just want to have the sex and the, the entertainment aspect of it? You can do that. But again, I'm going to tell you that emotionally, this is not going to be an easy separation if you choose to continue to go on with it. And and really get him to share what his intentions are. What are your intentions? If your intentions are just like, I want to have a three month toward love affair with you. And then I want it to end because I want to find someone that I can have a life with. Then tell him that and, and ask him, what are your intentions? But I can tell you the entanglement is going to get deeper. Uh, it's going to get deeper. And you've got another human that is going to be devastated and hurt. And if this gentleman wants multiple partners, then he needs to go to his wife and say, honey, I'm polyamorous and I want to be with multiple partners. And if he can't tell that truth, then who wants to be with a guy that can't tell the truth? And if we do want to be with a guy that can't tell the truth, then why do we not want to know the truth? And like, it's always a mirror. So just get back to you, get back to you. Why, you know, what's my truth? What do I want out of this? What are my intentions? And really be honest with yourself because that's the lesson. Ultimately, that's the lesson is for you to get to your truth. Is that helpful? And is there something more coming live online? Was that, did that help? Yeah, I'm loving the engagement online. Um, there's another aspect of that they work together and that he's doing a lot for her at work. And so there's a continued, uh, they're going to be around each other a lot. You're not going to like what I'm going to say next. <laughs> Get a new job. It's, uh, I don't want to feel like I'm like your mother right now, but I can tell you the wisdom would say that you will potentially, when we don't tell the truth, we lose our life, our love. And I don't mean like die, lose our life, but I like our life force. It's a fun when we're in it, but you lose your job. Like if here's the way that I live my life and I know I'm not always perfect at it. And I know that not everybody else has the same level of standard. So I'm not suggesting you have to live your life like this, but I live my life. Like if I wrote everything that I ever do in a book, would I want everyone to know that? I know that's like, that's kind of crazy, but I really try hard to do that because that means that I'm accountable for my truth. It's not so much about the judgment of like what everybody else is going to have. Right. But it's like, am I in my truth so much so that I could, that, that I could put it out into the world and feel good about myself. It's about myself, right? It's not about sharing my stories with others or whatever, but can I feel good about myself? And I, I think that's where I keep getting the word integrity for you because I feel like you're, you're actually someone who is really integrous. Is that a word? But, you know, you have a lot of integrity and you, and you wouldn't be asking here, you wouldn't be asking this question on this show if you didn't have integrity because you'd just be doing it and you, you wouldn't be seeking guidance, but you're so in it. You're so already entangled and raveled that you're like, help, I know I'm kind of going down this interesting road and I love this road, but yet I, I feel you already know the ramifications of this road. You got to get to your truth. You've got to really 
understand why you're doing this and what are your patterns? What is your wounding that you're with someone who is unavailable and someone at work? Because what comes to me on that is that you're actually enjoying, I feel that you're enjoying, your higher self's telling me, you're enjoying the secrecy of this relationship at work. Dig into that. What is that? Like, that's the truth that you want to get to. Like, why is the secrecy, you know, and that's why a lot of people do affairs. I'm not, again, it could be for the collective, but that's why people do affairs because there's like so much juice and like the secrecy, you know, but man, when we show up and we show people who we really are and we're like really honest and trustworthy and truthful, I mean, there's going to be a lot of, okay, I'm going to play it out. It may not be what happens for you, but down the road, you get exposed and everybody at work knows that you've had this hidden relationship with a married man. Unfortunately, oftentimes it's the woman that gets blamed. You, and he's the guy that's cheating, but you're going to get blamed. Everyone's going to look at you. Everyone's going to say, oh my God, when I was in that meeting and that happened, like people's, oh, wow. And they were doing that Oh, wow. Right. All these things are going to popcorn on you. And that's where I'm saying like the, the end road of this gets pretty, pretty gnarly. And so I'm going to stick to what I said. You need to get a different job. Anything else? Just that one of the viewers pointed out that you might have some insight about this in your book, a yeah. chapter. Um, well, there's lots of insights in my book, uh, Angels, Purpies, and Psychedelics. So thanks for yeah, bringing it forward. Um, I think this is all about truth telling. You know, it is about telling yourself the truth because that's where you get to the juicy lessons and nuggets of what you came here to learn in this lifetime. And so I think this affair is a really important element of your life's journey. I'm just going to continue to go back to say, please think about it from integrity and entanglement and the fact that there's other humans that are involved that can be really hurt by your actions and that sometimes just acting out on things that feel fun aren't for your highest good and they're not for their highest good either. So hopefully that's helpful. I'm happy for you to come back and ask more questions uh, later on. We'll move on to the next question, but thank you for being so vulnerable and for telling the truth here on the show. We are down to the wire. We've got some additional questions that we didn't get to today. I, I will put them on the list in top queue for next week. Please tune in. And if you haven't already, please do the state of the heart assessment. It's so much fun. You'll find out if your heart is blocked, broken, healing, or whole. And it just gets you, you know, deeper reflecting into like, hey, like what's really heavy on my heart? Like what's the state of my heart? And you also get some tips, tools, techniques to help you with your spiritual toolbox. And if you want something more, of course, you can always read the book, Angels, Herpes, and Psychedelics. Uh, and if you want something more, you can get the Awakening and Healing Handbook. It's on bethbell.me. There's lots of tips, tools, modalities in there as well. And there's the psychedelic resource guide. So if anything I've said about ayahuasca might start to tap some curiosity and interest, uh, please go to bethbell.me. The psychedelics resource guide is, is really a great guide to help you explore whether or not this is the right option and how to go about it. And then, of course, we have the herpes handbook. So that's also on bethbell.me. I can't wait to see you next week. Please submit your questions, bethbell.me slash question. And I look forward to seeing you next week. Until then, wishing you much bliss and love on the journey. Namaste.